guys, it's Chris, and finally a subscriber understands a brother. Sent me a package that we're gonna open. What kind of food is it? <sighs> hey Chris, here's my 1200 for recap, FPU install. No rush, take as much time as you need. I know you've done this before. If you even want to feel free to make a video, please do so. I thought there was food in here. <laughs> please keep any extra FPU sockets. There's a bag of other goodies here as well. Stuff I purchased that wasn't needed or what I needed. Or I purchased a bazillion of and only needed one. I think there's even an A500 cap kit. Thanks, Steve. Well, Steve, here's your girl. Normally these are gutted to yuck. Look at that. If this is a recap, holy crap, you have a clean board. 1D Rev F. NTSC 1200. Full clock port. So, I'm going to get set up and we're going to do a recap. So, Steve sent me a bunch of stuff. Inside of here is a thing. <laughs> DKB... 1200 SCSI 2 with what? Where's the rest of it? Yeah, like this. And gives you SCSI. But the rest of it's gone. Where's the rest of it? I don't know. You guys know what this is? Seen it before? It's missing the piece that goes right here. Just drop something on the floor. Maybe that was it. Some GPIO headers, some boards. These are the things you use for a ZIF socket 27C, 322, 422, 800 uh, EEPROM adapters that fit into the, the GG Labs things. I think I have enough parts on hand to build these. Very nice. Two piece battery things, these are always a positive. Thanks for contributing to these. I don't know what these are, these are two post ones. I don't know if they can be used on the Amiga. They're three posters, but I think their legs are a little too close together. I'll check that out. Thank you. These kind, two and three posters, I can use all day long. And I go through them. That is great. Retro Rewind Cap Kit for the Amiga 500. These are Nichicon caps. So if you are considering a cap kit, get it from Retro Rewind. I used a kit from another company and you saw what happened on the 3000 tower. I should have used my own. You know, I have a couple of the expensive ones. You know, they're in the bandolier roll. Michicons and Rubicons and the other kinds. I even got a couple of old Radio Shack jobbers I would trust before I trusted the other ones. So yeah, Retro Rewind caps. Quality caps. They use the official Nichicon or Rubicon. No Hongwai Tog dial. Even got the bipolar uh audio style high quality ones and frank you're selling these too cheap gold nichicon for audio top shelf so i'm telling you right now if you need a cap kit don't order it from those other stores that pack them full of cheap chinese stuff quality caps retro rewind.ca not sponsored but if you use my code no code which started off as a joke you'll save 10 percent on your order I know this because I use my own code to purchase things. <laughs> so thank you, Frank, for providing quality parts in your parts. Um, so thank you, Steve, for the extra bits. They will be used, trust me, in other free pairs, as I call them. These things I'll probably build and give out to you guys. What do we got? We have the cleanest A1200 that I have had the privilege of working on since the last one. And everybody's always like, if you're wondering, oh, you didn't put an ESD static bracelet on. If you know me and watch my videos, I, I clamp my body to the fascizzle thing. And I clip her to the metal grounded leg of either my table or whatever. I have a copper wire that runs to basically the ground of my house power connected into the bus bar. Whenever you see me working on stuff and parts and whatever, handling them, and you're thinking, man, that guy's a static bag, lightning bolt, waiting to happen. I'm grounded. It's on my foot. So, I apologize I don't mention that all the time, but I assumed, never assume, that people would know that. So, 
Anyway, hit it. Here we go. We are powering on the 1200 with uh, 3.2 ROMs burned 310 2022. This is going to work unless something miraculously happened to it. There you go. That took 30 seconds, probably. 20 seconds, 1259. I always use the camel toe mouse. It's funny. And I don't care if it blows up. So that is why I always use that mouse. We are go teching off of the go tech, duh, and uh, booting install 3.2 because these are 3.2 ROMs, and yes, it asks for DF0 for an add buffers if you're booting off a of go tech and you get that external drive. Disregard that error. So you can see here that this Amiga 1200 does function. Even further, I could boot ATK. There we go. This is a stock Amiga. We're going to go to audio here. I'm going to turn the Devoom TiVo on. That's this little box, Devoom.com. And also this box over here. If you're wondering where I get those from, audio. Little tinny. Works fine. Test all the RAM. It's just RAM and it works fine. So I'm done. So I'm going to turn this off. You know the drill. I even hate to recap this because it's just. So, they're perfect caps. There's nothing wrong with them. I had to uh, find the communication method that I used to start this conversation. It was reached out across Discord. Normally I converse via email, and uh, so I have a record, and I can send you pictures and any updates or questions. Okay. I just did one of the 1647s, and like, look how amazing this looks. This board is like literally brand new. No caps have leaked. Out pretty beautiful. Look at this audio circuit. But I wonder why C460 has a capacitor in it when normally it does not. It's just too, too nice. If that's a thing. Maybe it was done years ago. And this oh, is just hello. It's 2:28 p.m. I uh, went back to the Chinesium solder gun. It just works better for me. I don't know why. The little 75 watt uh, Heiko power supply isn't sufficient. We're done with the caps, all 18 of them. You can see the red dots because that way I can count them easier. And that's just kind of my thing. Now on to the task at hand, which was the main requested reason. And that is the FPU addition to this board. The simplest way to do this is use the pre tin that Commodore put on there 475 years ago. All right. So these sockets are useless. They have holes in them and they're keyed for a board with holes. So let me get one of my sockets out. So these are Max Cons flat bottom. See? That way they'll fit in there. This is a Max Con. FPU socket, you can see there's a mark at the bottom, so what I do is I mark myself a 1, just like that. Just a scratch. That way when you pop this out, you know which direction is 1. Here are all my pins, I have a little bit of flux on this side. Make sure it is sitting flat. And you can take your time at this because it's important to line this up properly. Very important. When you get it in line, just touch one of your pre-tinned pads and that'll still allow you to move it. And you can touch another one. And just make sure you're in line, touch another one. Once you have enough of the corners touched in, you will be able to kind of just go around, go around the ballpark here. And that's just what I'm doing. Don't be afraid to use flux. Flux is your friend. You can chip quick it. I'm just going to use the liquid solder flux because it's quick and I like it. I'm using a fine tip.
All right. Once you have enough of them, go ahead and get yourself some silver quick chip quick or whatever. Tin up a little bit. You want you can coat your tip. Take your time. No rush. If your tip gets crunchy, clean it. Don't be afraid to move your board around to suit your needs. I'm trying to film this while doing it so it's harder for me to film and do. Hold this out on a tip and a touch. So after my eyeballs burned and I itched them and I had flux on my hand, again, FPU socket 1200. There we go. Pin 1. Marked with a scratch. Now, what you can do is you can get the FPU clock line, which is usually the pin up here on the top right when you insert it, and run that to the 28 megahertz FPU clock crystal right here. You can either be stupid and take this off and run a wire like a human would or you can go underneath and punch through a via somehow and uh, do that too so we're not doing that here and there is a 33 megahertz FPU and a 25 megahertz slot for a 14 megahertz board and there you go you can see clearly look the carrot in this week 68 882 ECO20. Uh, it's nothing's going to change. It's still 14 ish megahertz. We're in NTSC. One point three three MIPS, zero point four megaflops now. Woohoo! It just says. Excellent. I'm going to try something. This is an Amiga kit. FPU 40 megahertz, eight meg board. I'm going to disable the FPU because it has an internal FPU now. So here we are, AIBB 14.3, 14.3, and what we're gonna do is the test system is a 60 to 20 SC math, myself 60 to 20 SC math. My comparison system is Amiga 1200. There we go, that's me, NTSC high res, blah, 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 your mom. Here, we're gonna do the beach ball first in SC math, which is the general processor. It's gonna be 116 seconds, it's going to take a while. I'll fast forward through this. Okay, so as you can see we are 1.71, I don't know. 178.08 seconds, SC math. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the trigger here. CP, CP math, because we have a coprocessor. We're going to run the same test live. Here we go, beach ball. Look at the incredible, how much better that is. I mean, it's live. I'm not fast forwarding the clock or moving it around. This will take about 18 seconds. So for those of you in the community, that say putting a 1200's FPU socket is stupid and doesn't mean nothing. Well, balls to the wall. Here's a 1200 stock. Here it is with an FPU using CP math, 22.7 seconds. So that concludes this episode of What the F? And we have an Amiga 1200. That looked great from the beginning. I did find a couple caps that were uh, starting to be questionable. So I don't know if it was a recap or just was really taken care of in the best possible climate controlled or stored upside down. I don't know. It looked great. Now we got caps in. Yeah, I have red marker on them. It's just how I do things. If you want it off, take a little bit of alcohol, comes right off. It's just a Sharpie pen on an aluminum cap, comes right off. It's just my own personal reference. And I hope you enjoyed this little bit of Amiga 1200 work. It wasn't nothing major. 
wasn't a catastrophic repair, but the owner did request that I put the FPU socket in. And I want to thank each and every one of you, and even you, buddy, you sitting back there on the couch in your underwear. It's okay. Thank you for watching. Thanks for your support. And thank you to all of my Patreons who help continue to make these free pairs and upgrades possible. Thank you guys for watching, and as always, I hope you learned something.